again and welcome to BrewingBagStands.com. I am your host John and today we're going to do uh, video 4 which is our lift system and attaching our accessories to our mini mite stand. Okay so what I have here today is a mini mite stand and a model 2 stand and that way you get to see all the different uh, accessories and lift systems that I have on both of the stands. Okay if you haven't already go to BIABStands.com and download the workbook to build the mini mite stand. Okay, the lift system is not in this work booklet, uh, so you want to go to biabstands.com and purchase one of the other books. Uh, the closest one to a B, uh, mini mite is a 1A and a 1B stand or a model 1 booklet. Okay, if you do not want to purchase the booklet, that's okay. Uh, we'll explain everything in the videos. There'll be plenty of pictures. So you just stop and go to the videos and you should be fine. Okay? Now, let's do a quick review. Uh, in video one, we talked about the materials and how to use the Mini Mite workbook clip. And video two, we made the, the bottom and the top and cut our legs. In video three, we jigged and assembled the top and bottom as well as made our shelf our, to hold our burner. And then, of course, video four, now we're doing the lift system and attaching accessories. And video five, we're going to actually brew on the mini mite stand. I've already done two uh, brews on this stand, so we have everything tweaked and we're ready to go for video five. Okay, but before we get to the brewing, let's go ahead and put our lift system together. So let's talk about what we need for this video. If you look at above the picture, you're going to have all the tools and equipment, which is included a screwdriver, a wrench, the hardware, a marking device, a measuring device, a mechanical wrench, as well as a regular box and open end wrench, three inch uh, or four inch wide flat stock, one inch by one inch by one inch or one inch square stock, one and a quarter inch conduit and some conduit or pipe hangers, cutting uh, equipment, and of course our drill to drill our holes. Uh, if you're questioning on the cutting and watching cutting, it's in video two, and it should help you out a lot. Okay, so let's get back to making our lift. The first thing, of course, we're going to do is we're going to take our three inch by four or four inch, and we're going to cut it three inches by four inch um, piece of flat stock and then we're going to measure our one inch and one inch. So take a look here. One inch here, one inch here, and then we're going to cut out the access. Now don't throw out the access because on the access you use it for the weld. So if you got a buddy who's building this along with you and he wants to weld his, this is the corner piece right here, the little truss piece that he's going to need so you don't waste any metal. Okay? To weld this together. Okay? Now our square stock is going to be 50 to 58 inches long and that depends on how high you need to lift and lower the stand. Okay? The top piece is 14 to 20 inches. Okay? And that depends on where is the center of your, your pot. In other words, the measurement from, from where you want your string to come down, okay? So you start with a longer piece and then cut down to size after you install your pulleys, okay? All right, so now we need to build this. We got our piece made. Okay, now we need to pick up our holes. How you pick up your holes is look here. If you notice, half inch, half inch from the edge, okay? And then half inch and a half inch here. And the idea is we're going to make this nice little L right here, and that way we're going to install this. So then we clamp it with our piece of metal. We get our edges nice and clean, and then make sure it is tight, okay? And once we get that, then we mark our metal, and then we drill and pick up our four holes, and it should look something like this. Now we have to make two of these. So there's one on this side. And then, of course, this one is going to go on this side. As you can see, it will sandwich it, okay? 
sandwich it and it holds it very strong. You're not going to uh, break it or mess it up. Now let's talk about attaching hardware. So attaching hardware for the truss, for this right here, should be a quarter inch 20 bolt stainless steel with a shank. A shank is where it's non-threaded. Make sure the shank is long enough to go all the way through. So it goes all the way through, okay, my metal, okay, because this is the part that's going to your shank is what holds the weight when you press, when you keep trying to press, you're trying to shear the bolt. It will definitely hold. This quarter inch stainless steel is, is really good uh, material, and it's not going to uh, break on you unless you put excess weight on it, okay? So that's it. So we got our cross member made or our lift made. Now we need to mount our lift onto our stand. And how we're going to do that is we're going to start with our quarter inch, one and a quarter inch uh, conduit. And our one and a quarter inch conduit is diameter on the inside one and a quarter. Okay? So thin and thick wall don't make that big of a difference, uh, but it's got to be one and a quarter. And the idea is, is we're going to have this piece slide inside of our pipe and that way it's going to spin around and it's going to hold it. This is going to hold it in place. Okay? So the first thing we have to do to our conduit is decide the size. Now anywhere from 30 to 36 inches is what you need. Okay? And that's going to be a preference for you. Okay? But the main things you can't get away is, is this needs to sit on a bolt or some kind of end. Because if you notice, it goes all the way through. Okay, so when you're trying to spin this and it's on the table, it's really hard to spin it if it's if it's on the table. So it's going to sit on this bolt. So from the bottom of the conduit, go up one inch, drill your hole all the way through, and install your hardware. Again, you could use your shank bolt, or you could put a carriage bolt, okay, all the way through. And once you have that, so when you put it on here, it's going to spin. Now I have my bolt installed, I'm going to lock it. As you can see, this one is in lock position, and this one is not. Okay? This one will spin around. So what you want to do is, and get your D pin, or your pin, or your uh, uh, D lock pin is what I use, and drill your hole through your conduit, and you want to set about 90 degrees on the edge of the table. So what I'm talking about is, is, is spin it 90 degrees just like that and then pick up your hole, okay? Then you can insert your pin and once you do that it'll be locked. It's like this one. It is locked, okay? Can't spin. Now that's important when you're brewing because it keeps it out of the way of when you're brewing and then all you need to do is unpin it, lift it up, pin it again, and then you could spin it like this one, okay? And lift your bag up. But in the meantime, it's in a nice stow position so it doesn't come and get, uh, get in your way when you're brewing, okay? So now we got the two pins, all right? Got the pin, it's locked, okay, and all that. Now I need to install my winch. Why do I install my winch before my cable and my pulleys? The reason you do that is, is because you want to make sure that the critical part of your lift system is your hook going into the center of your pot. So go ahead and put in your winch and put in your cord, run your cord up and run it out until it hangs into the middle of your uh, pot. And that will tell you where to put the furthest out or the most critical pulley at. Okay? So if you look at some of the past pictures, you'll see this being done, okay? So the one on the end close you put on close, this doesn't really matter how close or how far away. This is your most critical one. Your furthest pulley's got to be so your your so your hook is right over the center of your burner. Okay? And what that important is is so when you're lifting out the bag it doesn't try to push your bag around or force in your pot. Okay? So as you get it up. So now that we got our pulleys in, and I have pictures to show you how to put the pulleys in, 
All you have to do is put on the attaching hardware and make sure that this is hanging in the center. Now you can cut off your access if you want to or you can keep it long. Now I've kept this one long because this is a demonstrator and that way I can change out all my different pots and different burners as a demonstrator. So most of the time they're very short like this one right here. Okay? Alright. So now we have our holes. We got everything together. One last thing. We have to mount this onto our stand. That's where the the pipe hangers come in. These things are great. Uh, they're not very expensive at all. You can purchase them in any hardware store. And they're used for hanging conduit and water pipes. Okay. So the big thing is, is just make sure it fits the, the appropriate size conduit and make it tight. Okay. So how I installed ours is look in the picture, and you'll see that it's it's attached right onto the top part of the stand. And the bottom one is attached to the shell. That way, as I move my shell, it'll still stay well attached and it'll be good to go. You definitely want two attachments for this stand. Okay? Alright, so we have our pulley, winch. Let's talk about the cable. I'm using paracord. Paracord has high uh, tensile strength, it's uh, mold resistant, UV resistant. So it's a very strong, strong. Uh, threads and cable, okay? It has a very high tensile strength and it works great. Now, you definitely can still use cable, there's nothing wrong with using cable. Uh, just make sure when you get your cable that you use something that is uh, corrosion resistant because you're in a water environment, okay? Same thing goes for your cord. Make sure it's strong enough and that is mildew and UV because you don't want this to break while you're lifting out your bag. Keep an eye on it. Check your cable and check your your uh, paracord to make sure that it's in good shape prior to brewing. Okay. On the hook, I prefer a locking hook or a hook that has a clip, so it'll uh, hold your bag in place. Okay. So that's it on the lift system. There's just not that much uh, to do, and very easy to build. Now. The one thing we haven't talked is, is how does it how does it lift and lock in place? You have to lift your stand up, put your bag on, lift it up until you just pass your pot, mark it, and drill a hole in your flat stop. Okay? And then you put the hole the same size as your pen. And the one the pen you use for locking, you just take that pen, you put it in, and it rides on top of the conduit. It spins around on the conduit. Still lock it so it doesn't come out. Okay? But yes, it works very well. It doesn't hurt the pen. It doesn't hurt the... Uh, you can spin it 360 degrees. It's not going to do any harm whatsoever. Okay? It's a very simple, simple uh, way of making a lift system. Alright? Okay. So, that's it on the lift system. So, let's talk about the accessories. Okay, and we're going to start first with our electrical. Um, if you can see, both electrical systems is a little bit different. I use a deep two-gain box on this one. This is just your normal two-gain box. The problem is with a normal gain box is you can't put your igniter system in. Okay, if you notice, I did a switch and an outlet together, and then this one has a regular outlet and a switch. Make sure they're uh, rated properly and that they have all the safety uh, features on it to keep you from, because you're in a water environment, you don't want to get hurt. Okay? And it just switches on and off for the power. And then I put a pigtail on it uh, so I can hook it up to uh, an extension cord or whatever. Okay? And we're good to go. Alright. So the next thing about our electrical is the fun part. And as you can hear, that's the igniter system. The igniter system is probably one of the best features I've done on this uh, stand. And it makes it very easy where I'm not putting my face down with a lighter anymore uh, and trying to watch the gas uh, and watch it light up. It lights up very quickly with an igniter when it's installed properly. Okay? So how do I do that? Well, I use ProGrill. Uh, there's plenty of universals out there igniter kits for just your regular old grill. 
They're not expensive. I think I paid twenty to twenty-three dollars for the set. Both of these, it's on here. Okay, and the it's it's worth every penny of it. It, it takes the uh, the making uh, lighting not a big issue. It's uh, you don't have to worry about your lighter go out. I carry a spare battery, and I carry a lighter also just for backup when I'm on the road. But at home, it's awesome. Okay. So there's two ways of mounting the igniter. On the Blickman, of course, it's already got the hole, and all you have to do is mount it and then bend the igniter into place at the appropriate gap per the manufacturer's instructions. On these igniters, make sure you follow the manufacturer recommendation of installing. Okay? So the difference in the SP10 on the Bayou Classic is, as I have a post, if you look at the picture, you can see the post of uh, me putting uh, the uh, igniter on the leg and then had to come back around. Okay, so take a look at that picture, it's not very hard. I use a number 10, 32, or a quarter uh, 20 again. And if you notice, I had to put brass on the very top of mine because it was sparking over, it was too good of a ground. I had to take the uh, brass as non conductive so it stopped it from crossing over. Once you get it installed and tightened, then you install the battery. The main thing about installing these igniter systems, do not put the battery in the igniting system until it's mounted. It will zap you. And the second thing you need to know is follow the instructions about grounding. Grounding is very important on this igniter system because if it will go to the best ground. Sometimes it will even go down your gas line. Sometimes it will go on to your burner on your stand and you will feel it when you touch it. Okay, So make sure you ground it properly. Okay, so that's our electric and that's our ignition system. Next thing I want to talk about is our pumps. On these two pumps, I have a solar pump. You mount the solar pump on again with the conduit. Just take your solar pump with you to the store, measure it, match it, drill your quarter inch 20 of the same bolt you use to mount your stand, and you mount it. Okay, you wire it into your electrical system, and you're good to go. Now, do I use a, um, a chugger? Uh, yes. Uh, on my, if you look on the very uh, red stand, you'd see a March uh, pump and a chugger pump uh, style, both installed. And you just make sure you mount it on the optional bar. And this bar, of course, is going to be lower because it's a bigger pump. I prefer the small one, but both pumps works excellent because I have... Uh, a march on my triple tier. So I do use the march and chugger pumps. Okay? So that's my pump system. The next is, is of course my chilling system. And of course on this one I have a plate chiller and on this one I have a counterflow chiller. The counterflow chiller mounts by these two little brackets on the bottom and it just cradles it. Okay? And you've seen pictures of that in, if, in, the, in the other books, the other pictures of the stand. It works very well, and you can mount it onto your uh, mini mite stand the exact same way. I thought I'd do something different, and I put a plate chiller I've had for a while, and I mount my plate chiller on. And how I did that is, is I just picked up the holes from the post and then used wing nuts so I could take it on and off and uh, be able to clean it. It was very easy to install. Okay, the last and final item, of course, is water filtration. And we need a water filter because we brew beer and we have to take out the chlorine and all the heavy sediments. So as I turn the stand around, you can see right here my water system. Now, the water system is very easy to install. You just pick up the two holes from the mount and I tap them. And the real reason I tap these versus putting a nut on the back of them is because I have to take this off very often and drain the water out and change the filter and etc. Uh, you can put wing nuts on the back if you don't want to tap, and that means tap means putting the threads in the metal. So you drill these and tap, tap them, and then you just screw your screws in, and you're good to go. But you can still use wing nuts and nuts, okay? So don't let the, let that chase you away from this. This is still an easy to easy build. Just make sure you can get it on and off when you need to. All I have to do is loosen the two screws and pull it off, okay? And as you can see. This was very, very easy to do, and it didn't take all that long to build this stand. So these stands are really, really 
uh, great. They're light. They don't look as heavy. Uh, they're great for brewing. I've already done two brews. So, that actually covers everything we need to talk about in video four. So, let's talk about video five. In video five, we're going to brew, and we're going to go all through the whole thing. We're going to show you how to use this stand from the beginning to end. It doesn't matter what you're using the uh, Model 2 or the Mini Mite. All stands operate exactly the same. So it's going to be a good video for all the stands. Uh, I'm going to try to convince my wife to brew on the Model 2 stand while I brew on the Mini Mite. Okay, that way you get a good look at both stands and how they operate. Okay? So, let's talk about the recipe. Uh, I haven't made up my mind. I told you in another video I was going to do Payback Porter, but uh, I already made it. I did two test brews. I did a Yellow Fizzy and a Porter. Uh, so, I'm going to leave it open to you guys. Uh, why don't you guys come to BIABstands.com on my Facebook page or Homebrew Talk Mini Mite, uh, Build Mini Mite, or uh, my first BIAB stand build and let's talk about what recipe we would like to do and we'll do that recipe on this stand. Uh, let's keep it to five gallons if you don't mind. You can do a 10 gallon batch. Uh, I have done a 10 gallon batch on these stands uh, and it did it with no problems whatsoever. In fact they were both enjoyable brews. Okay but we're going to do five minute uh, to cut down the time or five gallon to keep keep time down. But I do want to do a five. I do not want to do a two and a half or a three gallon. I want a, uh, the normal brew. Okay? So with all that said, please come to the websites and please comment. I could use all your help. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. So post pictures. Uh, and if you need help, please post questions on all the sites, including BIABstands.com. And we can go ahead and get back to you as fast as we can to help you finish your build. These things are not that hard and they're wonderful. And just remember, we started out with bed frames and we got to this point, which is pretty amazing. Okay? So I hope you enjoy your stand. And let's say it together. Dream, build, and brew. Thank you very much.